Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Sorry I am late. Um, he is on pizza. Because, <laughs> uh, we got Papa John's. Oh, I thought it was pizza. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> load. Um, so that's why I'm late. I was eating. <laughs> um, yeah, I got a bit of a headache, so we'll see how how we do today. Put that up here. Um, hopefully the volume is okay. Um. Um, but yeah, that's what we're doing. Sorry if my voice is a little gunky. I just ate pizza. I don't know what you call it. <clears throat> it was it's that thing where it's like folded pizza. I don't know what it's called. But it was literally just like a thin crust pizza folded in half. <laughs> Hi J Bent. Hi Elon. Hi dear. Congrats on being first. Good to see you. Hope you're doing all right. Hi J Bent. Hi Thorn. Hello everybody. Hello, hello. Hi, Ninetale. I'm doing all right. I just ate pizza thing from pa Papa John's. I think it was Papa. Yes, it's Papa John's. <clears throat> so if I'm coughing or whatever, it's because I got pizza grease in my throat. And uh, yeah. <clears throat> Otherwise, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for the lurk, Thorn. Thank you, dear. And hi, Ninetail. Hey, dear. How are you? Hope you're doing all right. Having a mega Christmas tree. Let's see. 1350. All right, we'll buy it. We need. We just need two hundred dollars. Your life is interesting. You're not doing well. I'm sorry, dear. I'm sorry to hear that. It gets better. Who's that? Little? A very good friend. Um, but we're we're playing some Valhalla tonight. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm sorry to hear that, nine two. I'm sorry to hear that, dear. I hope they get better soon. But hi, Elon. How, I hope you're doing all right, dear. I hope your project's going all right. Monster girlfriend, Girari. Can't stop playing this game. Gorgeous graphics, innovative and addictive battle system, fun dating mini games, cute girls, the fucking music. Is this the goat? Don't know. Do you like the goat girl? Heh. <laughs> I'm gonna marry a goat. It's an alright game, it's it. 8 out of 10 at most. Shit game. No, it's a shitty game for idiot waifu bots like you. I wish this waifu equals bad game meme would die. It's a stupid game pandering to idiots. That's <clears throat> what's there to discuss. We're being raided by normies? But my normies! Fuck off. <laughs> fun things are fun. You're not allowed to have fun with video games. This story is closed. It's for nerds. I'm so here that dear. That's no good. Wait, the Christmas tree we bought was called a mega Christmas tree. It's like two feet tall. That's not a mega Christmas tree. Uh, my keys really seem. Is this the greatest thing to ever grace planet Earth? 
I literally can't stop touching myself. Oh, we've already read that. Okay. AM Townships. Okay, yeah, we read that one too. The Augmented Eye. <coughs> Lilim receiving mysterious messages. By Lana Smithy. Halloween was back in October, but this terrifying tale didn't become popular until now. Reports say that Lilim across the city have been receiving strange transmissions with messages that are confusing at best and threatening at worst. The contents are not clear, as most of the Lilim can't remember exactly what they had heard. But the most mysterious thing of all is that perhaps the fact is perhaps the fact that the Lilim could not record any of these messages while they were broadcasted. It was almost as if someone had blocked the Lilim from doing so. But we have nothing but anecdotal proof, even among our own Lilim. The mystery behind these messages is one we should be paying attention to. Spooky. Or a bluff. Um, so I, I don't know who's here right now. <laughs> but I, I bought a harmonica on Amazon today. It should it'll hopefully get here tomorrow. Um, which you guys... <laughs> I'm going to do it anyway. But, uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to play Alien Isolation. I'm probably going to have to restart because it's been a, a year since I've played it. <laughs> um, but we're going to play Alien Isolation. And I'm going to have the harmonica in my mouth the whole time. That's the plan. Here. I don't know if <laughs> the in my mouth the whole time or just when something scary is happening. I don't know. We'll find out, I suppose. Give Mickey the biggest pop idol in history. The world at large is still coming to terms with the idea of the Lilim be being so quickly integrated into our society. Some say they can't be treated as human because they're immortal, and as such, cannot really understand what it's like to be alive. But most of the Kira Mickey fandom would disagree. anti Lilim people are insane. To me, Mickey knows more about life than I do, and I'm older than this damn city, Richard Show. 55 told the augmented eye during a fan gathering. I'm with Richard, added Nacho. Six. <laughs> I may be a dog, but I'm utterly fascinated with the way she writes about things in her blog. She's impressed by everything, and nobody really knows what life's about anyway. Quincy studies the possibility of allowing imports. Glitch City is one of the few places on Earth that's strictly self-sufficient with an import rate of only 0.8%. However, that might change due to the recent shortages across the city. Prime Minister Quincy revealed this morning that the government plans to have a more relaxed policy for importers. We don't lift the currency control. Or, sorry, we won't lift the currency control, but we can provide them foreign currency at a low fixed rate. That way we can secure essential items at, at affordable prices, Quincy told AE. Some experts say that private companies are no longer working at full capacity, which is unsurprising news given the fact <coughs> given that the Quincy government has seized most of them, resulting in a shortage crisis in the first place. So we decided not to steal all of these funds. Good. Alright. Well, I think that's it. We can go to work now. Friday, December 23rd. Good evening. Ah, hey. How you feeling? A little more soft and warm. Come again? You heard me. So, on a scale from steaming pile of shit to just sad, where are you? Hmm. A sad pile of shit. <laughs> I still hate myself. I'm still sad as hell, but how to put it? The noise stopped. I don't know if I explained myself. Sorta. Of, kinda. So, how were things last night? Cozy, I must admit. I can't believe you paid Dorothy for that. Well, if you want to call that payment, I... If you want to call that payment, I guess. Hmm? I called Dorothy to tell her what happened to you, and she was really concerned. She stuttered for a second, saying that she had a whole night to go... The whole night to go, and she could, just couldn't leave for free. 
I asked her how much, and she said, Enough to pay for the soda I'm having is fine. <laughs> okay. Hi, Nighty. Hi, dear. Let me know if the volume's too quiet, too loud. Hi, Nighty. Hi, dear. Hope we're doing alright. I hope work was okay. Mwah. Um, they're here. <laughs> they're here, Nighty. I have them. The, the fishnets. I have them. All three of them. You was fine. That's good. That's good. Yeah. So, I'll, uh, I'll put some pictures of them up on Twitter, probably Sunday, sometime Sunday, so you can see them. How'd you get her number? I have contacts. Right. Anyways, anyways, Jill, if you just need a, a second break, a drink, or a hug, just let me know, you hear? Thanks. I'd make you the same offer, but I'm guessing hugs for me are the last thing you want. If you need a bartender, let me know, though. Nice to know. Anyways, we have work to do. I think we'll just keep the same. I just, yeah, we'll keep it the same. Time to mix drinks and change lives. <laughs> it's nice to hear that again. Did you say something? Did I? Welcome to Va- It's you guys. Hey, be more respectful. I brought my boss here. <laughs> okay. It's Rad Sheba. Aren't you a part-timer here or something? My other boss. I'm talking to the great Nacho Tumbleweed Jr. Boss, I'm taking my break. I know what I said earlier, but you haven't even started yet. So, what brings you here today? Hope you ate something yummy, Nightmares. It's good to see you, dear. I wanted to see the, see the place my best soldier is working in. Soldier? Wait, aren't you the dog I served, served last Monday? Huh? Oh, it's you! Dana! Soldier, why didn't you tell me you were working for Dana? No, that's not Dana. That's just Jay. So I'm guessing you're you're part of this whole hero thing? Part of it? I founded it. Humans have the best intentions, but they just don't get us. So I decided to create a place where dogs can be dogs. Here we can take in any dog without a place in this world. We created our own heaven on earth. And do you take corgis only? Do I look like one of those safe fire bitches? Of course not. I'd include other animals, but sadly I can only take care of those who are of the same species as, species as I. Sad thing is I'd take him more seriously, but it's a talking corgi with an eye patch. Will you get anything? I'm fine. What about you, boss? Mainly stuff. You sure? Did I stutter? Alright. Mainly drink for the doc. Maybe she just give him something bitter. <laughs> Manly. Go with a... Hmm. Sorry. Oh, I got hiccups. Oh boy. Just give him a gut punch, I suppose. Five. Blind ride. Aged. And mixed. Here. Yes, this is just what I wanted. Blah, it tastes worse than my own butt. Hey, you asked for it. This is a really nice place, you know. You picked a good place to work at, soldier. Thanks. Does he really get paid? 
Your efforts help Sierra t to keep Sierra afloat will not go on go to waste. We'll make her better and better. I mean we're pretty much on the verge of closing. Can boss really afford that? We have more urgent matters at hand though. Like the fact that we don't have enough balls for everyone. Can't they just share the ones we have? You fool, every dog has a right to have his own ball. If we can't provide even that, then what's the point of even trying? Wait, don't tell me she just doesn't give a fuck and is spending all her money like water. I mean, well, with the bar closing and all that. But many have enjoyed the boxes more than they do the balls. That's a good point. What do you think is cheaper, a box of balls or a box of boxes? Are there boxes of boxes? Of course there are. How do you think they ship boxes? <laughs> Tied together? Tied together? Don't be silly. Unless she's playing, paying him straight from her pocket. Boss is that kind of woman. This world is filled with all sorts of recursive madness, you know. Doctors consult doctors. Boxes come in boxes. Bottles come in bottles. Oh, as expected from you, boss. Wait, the theory only works assuming she's actually paying him with money. For I know, she might be paying him with stakes. So tomorrow you're going to check for people selling boxes, you hear? Sir, yes, sir. Except that to boss, a good stake is more valuable than money. Wait, what if they come with foil? Russell Trous had, had to be taken to the vet because he ate the foil a, pe a piece of cheese came in. Curses. You're right. We need, a we need a contingency plan. Besides, boss is, boss is not one to scam people, let alone a dog. I wonder if we can strike a deal with the vet who who's those safe our bastards have. She's always so nice, so nice with us. I know, her smile is so cute, too. So it's better that we we vet for a vet? Yes, put that on the list. Ah, Nacho. <laughs> They're so small. Oh yeah, I got you knew the dog. Are you staying for a while? I was just passing by. I've got some errands to run. Great, Gil can go with you. I can? You will. I'll still get paid for it today, right? That depends on Nacho's evaluation. Alright, Greenhorn, let's get going. <sighs> oh, I'm paying him anyways, by the way. Just wanted to mess around with him. No, that's not the problem here. Why make him do that? It looked like he needed to take a good break. And he used to kind of just not accept such a thing. But with Nacho, he'd have something to do. And he'd be... He'd be away from the bar for a bit. When you put it that way. Anyway, I'm going back to my office. Your boss sure is nice. Glad I'm working with her too. Yeah. So. <laughs> you having anything? Actually, I'm just going to go sit over there and be on standby. Await orders. Okay. Shit. I missed the chance to ask Cal or if he even gets paid with money. Man, I sure need to get wasted. I fail to see how getting wasted will make you feel but Sheba! For fuck's sake, you piece of scrap. Get to... We just got out of a building full of dogs. Well, this one has a Hawaiian shirt and sunglasses. Hey there, robot. And he talks. <sighs> Welcome to Valhalla. Hey, Jill. Give me a beer, will you? Gotcha. Does Dio want anything? Hi, Teddo. Hi, dear. How are you? Hope you're doing all right. Nobody said Twinkies. <laughs> Nobody said Twinkies. Sorry to disappoint. Are you playing anything tonight? Watching a movie. Just vibing. What? <laughs> Toto was asking if anybody said Twinkies. 
Uh, no, no, he's the only, <laughs> he's the only one that's brought him up so far. Okay, roll. Sir, yes, sir. So cute. He's fine. My game cyberpunk, nice. Well, you would never. Sure, Tether. Sure. <laughs> Is the volume okay? Is the game volume okay? Just a beer, then? Friday after work, it's a just a beer, though. It's me, beer. <laughs> Can't argue with that. I could make it big for that guy. Let's do it. Let's get a big beer. Two. Two. Three. Excuse me. Two. Three. Four. Six. Seven. Eight. See. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. There we go. All mixed. Here, let's make it special. Yeah! Cheers! Hey Jill, do you like beer? The amount of beer cans in my apartment is becoming a problem, actually. I had this friend back in high school who made some pretty nice crafts with them. I'm still in contact with him if you're interested. No, thanks. Last thing I need right now is more crap taking space. So how are things up at Dogtown? Well... That Laura girl is stirring things up, for better or for worse. For worse? She's, um, like a rabbit. An overly politically correct rabbit. Overtly politically correct rabbit. <laughs> rabbit? Never had a pet rabbit? They're a nervous mess that gets startled over the littlest of things. And this girl is on the constant lookout, scared of saying something that might irk someone. Beer? I've never had it. I don't even know what it smells like. <laughs> I, I might have smelled it once. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> the closest I've been to beer is working at Walmart and just walking past it, I suppose. <laughs> I have no experience with alcohol at all. doesn't have to be the person she's speaking with, even. It's no problem in the company, but the other day we went out together and holy shit, poor girl can't speak poor properly, but I can barely speak properly. <laughs> she pauses every sentence to make sure she doesn't say something offensive. She's a nice girl, and it's sweet that she tries so hard to not offend anyone. But seriously, she tries too hard. You don't help either. Hmm? You, you randomly yell, What did you say? Whenever she's within earshot distance. Yeah, well... It's just that she looks so cute when she's startled. Like a rabbit. <laughs> it raises up the question of whether she's actually like that, really like that. Or if you're the one making her wary of anything she says. Well, why don't we test that? How? You go out with her? Fine. To test if it's really me who makes her like that. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. Is the volume too loud? Is it too loud? Too high? Nobody said anything about it. <laughs> I'm gonna turn it down just a little. The song's kinda loud. It's not like you can say no, you know. I mean, it's my honor that's on the, on the line here. I want to prove you're only talking shit about me. Even if you are right, you have quite the fixation on that girl. She's fine. Sounds fine? Okay, thank you, Nighty. Oh, fun how? She actually reacts when I tease her. <laughs> You take it in your stride, but she actually gets startled, squirms, and then gets uncomfortable. 
How is that any good? She's cute and her reactions are cute. But if you keep it up, she'll either leave or get used to you. You know, like me. Shit, you're right. <laughs> I love this, this face that he makes. It's so cute. I must save my teasing for in the moment is just right then. No, that's not the problem. It is for me. And what are you doing here? What about the dog? He said he had to go out. Hmm. So I keep yawning. <laughs> he said his name was... Say, this, this Laura girl. Do you guys get along? I wouldn't know. We get along as co-workers at the very least. What kind of girl is she? Aside from the whole politically correct rabbit thing. Slow. She's the kind that does things so carefully that she does them really, really slowly. Really, really slowly. I can't deny that when she actually finishes stuff, she does a great job, but... It's unnerving. She doesn't actually have to be in the, be with us in the building, though. She's more like a freelancer. Why is she there, then? Because she likes dogs. <laughs> it does. Hmm. And that's why I insist that you two would make a fine couple. That's a really super superficial statement. It's like saying you'd be fine with someone because you're both women. Okay, bad example. May I say something? By all means. If that Laura girl really is as bland as you claim her to be, wouldn't she be, be, be better off with a more, um, a more assertive person? Lilim, uh, a more assertive partner? Yo, piece of scrap. She's truly calling you a pussy. <laughs> She's right, though. Sharing interests and being compatible are totally different things. But then, you'd be underestimating the power of love. Whether you want to admit it or not, love changes people. For better or for worse. Who knows, maybe you'll become more assertive after spending time with her. Or she'll drive me nuts. I guess that's a possibility, too. Still, why are you so insistent on me and her getting together? Because she's like a cute rabbit. So someone might try and eat her out. Try to eat her out there. It'd be a lot easier to keep her in my sight. So in short, your motherly instincts arose because of Laura. <sighs> why, why not if she likes you and... Why not see if she likes you and... You already tried to hit on her, didn't you? You make me sound like some skirt chaser. <laughs> She's not into girls. How did you find out? I asked her directly. Of course you did. She seemed, uh, giddy afterwards, though. I heard her muttering something about meeting our first lesbian. It was weird. Okay, enough Laura for tonight. That refrain from using any that's what you said last night jokes or variations thereof, please. Party pooper. Let's get a drink then. Sounds good. I'll have a bloom light, please. Give me a fringe beaver. Alright. Oh yeah, I hope you guys ate something good today. I ate some veggies and some waffle fries. And then we had Papa John's for dinner. I haven't had Papa John's in a really long time. <laughs> we only got it because it was a good deal. One powdered delta, two flint, right, and three permatrine. Uh, on the rocks? Oh, not H. Oh, 
aged rocks and mixed. There's our blue light. Now we need our fringe weaver. Adelhide, Adelhide, and nine karma tree. Oh my goodness. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Aged and mixed. Here you go. I wonder why it's called a bloom light. Seems it was first developed at some video games event. The creator said something about making the attendees feel like their customers do. Said attendees were, of course, part of some big games company. Seems that company always uses too much bloom lighting, so the bartender there literally made them a drink called... Them a drink... Made them drink... <laughs> I can talk, I swear. Or read, I can swear. Oh my goodness, I can't talk either. <laughs> Seems like company always used too much bloom lighting, so the bartender there literally made them drink all the bloom. So it's not called that because it glows in the dark? <laughs> I can't talk! I, th I promise! Not this one, no. Come to think of it, did you ever change because of the relationship, Joe? In more ways than one, I guess. Would you say for better or for worse? I guess for the better. I'm too thick-headed to develop any new bad habits. Although thanks to my first boyfriend, I did pick up a very annoying habit of correcting people's grammar on the fly. Pretty annoying when I think back to it. So you're one of those kinds. Of, so you were one of those kinds of people. As for me, sometimes I think I became more. Uh, what's the word? Cynical, jaded, bitter. Tired of the crap this world and everyone in it throws on a daily basis? Hey. I'm just quoting you. <laughs> but yeah, I think I became all that because of this one girlfriend I had in college. She got me into a whole, the whole activism thing in the first place. How was that bad? We'd all go and protest. We'd start all kinds of movements and th see things changed. I really got into the whole thing. But whenever I wanted to get more serious, I'd find myself coming up against a wall. That wall is an apology for the fact that not everyone is willing to go that far. I found out pretty fast that most of them were in the whole, th were in the whole thing because of some shitty fad. And not because they actually believed in whatever movement they, they were championing. So I moved from group to group only to find people who were in it because of a fad. And when they were not... And when they were not in it because of a passing fad, they were of the dangerous extremist kind. My tolerance for people's shit was greatly diminished after all that. So it wasn't so much the person you had the relationship, but rather other people. Um. You seriously never thought about it that way? Uh. You need to stop putting the blame for whatever what you did on what you do on past relationships. Whatever. Where's the other guy by where's the other guy by the way? He had to escort one of the dogs outside. Figures. Excuse me. Oh yeah. The one that was here asked if you were the nice lady, n nice vet lady that works at the Safar Toy Company. I suppose he's interested in talking to you or something. Why didn't he do it then? I don't know. You've been doing a few jobs on the side, haven't you? The pay from the dogs isn't enough to keep up with the mounting debts. I don't know how you do it. So do you believe dogs pay you at all? <laughs> Well, this is coming from someone working in a place that pays a dog for doing fuck all. Or at least I think we're paying him. I'm not completely certain we do. Will you get anything else? Well, we're fine. But we have to get up early tomorrow. And by we, I really mean her. 
She got invited to a picnic, and I won't stand it to hear another. We had to go to a picnic. Had to go to a picnic with a hangover story. Fine. Let's go then. See you, Jill. Bye. Please come again. Man, you're such a party pooper. You'll be the party pooper tomorrow if you keep drinking. Boss, I'll take my break. Call me if someone comes. All right. Ooh, that was quick. Felt quick, anyway. Let me just save. Boom. It's now safe to keep playing. No dogs in sight. Already at dusk on the list. Um, it's good. Okay, then back to work. Welcome to Va Oh, hey there, Alma. It's Alma, and people are wrestling in the background <laughs> on that TV back there. Uh-oh. Um. <sighs> she seems down. Maybe there's something I can give her to cheer up? She might like classy drinks. Which she really likes. Oh, I don't remember. It's been too long. It's brand teen. Okay. I had a feeling. Built it in my gut. Still, right? Oh. Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. And a karma train. Aged and mixed. Hey. Hmm? And this? It's on me. Drink. So you at least change your expression. Why don't you say you're worried about me? You got the message in your way, didn't you? Heh. <laughs> so, how is it? A brand teeny, so you do pay attention to what I ask for. You have quite the fixation with brand teenies. To be honest, they suit you. Hey, wanna hear a silly story? Always. When I turned 21, my dad and I went to a bar to celebrate. Just him and I. He told me to dress well enough that he, he looked like my sugar daddy. <laughs> it was a fun night. We pretended at times we, we were dating. I managed to blow off some steam about my mom. But the highlight was him ordering a brantini for me. I've had plenty of drinks and gotten wasted many times since I was 15. But that drink was different. It wasn't about getting drunk. The drink itself was the pleasure. He too said that they suited me somehow. Oh? Ever since that day, he's called me Brantini Girl from time to time. Downside, your dad sounds like a cool guy. You should meet him sometime. So, why are you deflating? Deflating? When I got sad and started sighing repeat repeatedly, 
My grandpa would warn me that I would start deflating like an old tire if I kept it up. <laughs> <coughs> so what is it? What is the news? Was it the news about people dressing in bunny suits after the whole Alice Rabbit boom? Nah, that is old. That's old news. I mean, it is a problem, but such a thing would only annoy me. Stay chill. How's the mood right now? I want to ruin it by blowing off on my stored steam. Silly Alma, I've been feeling like other shit the last couple days. You can't make me feel worse. So, go ahead. Unwind all your worries on me. Don't say I didn't warn you. Okay, so. Remember my sister Diana? The one that separated from her husband and forgot her kids while fucking her way around or something? Perfect summary. I'll use it next time. <laughs> I didn't tell you the whole story then. More specifically, that she threw her husband out after months of abuse. Oh. However, that woman is incapable of getting a job and maintaining herself. And I mean that. She she never even thinks about selling some stuff or trying to earn her or trying to earn her bread. She just expects a guy to do all that for her. I have no idea why she turned out like that. Both my mom and dad are hard workers. They even started a small shop to have something to do after retirement. Huh. So, what does this fully capable woman do a couple weeks later? Why well, bring our beast of husband back, of course. What? Yeah, and the guy spent a couple days with her before leaving her again. He had a nice couple of hot steamy nights and then left. Uh, I... Well... Huh? He acted like my little brother and sister after hearing that. But the story doesn't end there. Oh, no. So she's broke and can't even get enough for a bus. Even though she'd probably be glad to sell her ass just to get money. And it was up to me to pick her up. The last couple of days, she left She left her kids with my parents. And being such sweet angels, they've, they've made a mess out of the whole place. Bernardo and Eva are actually staying with me a couple of days to give them some peace. It doesn't help that I never got along with Diana. So, we're in the car and she asks how her kids are. And of course, after all that built up tension, I just exploded. First, I started ranting about how her kids are growing up seeing some messed up stuff. I started scolding her about not taking responsibility, about not taking proper care of her children. I tell her, that's, I tell her that she's in no place to have all those es escapades. And after all that, she just says, What the hell do you know? You don't have any kids. Hmm. Yeah, you slutty skink. I don't have kids, but I'm not broke just because I refuse to take a job. I don't have kids, but I'm not leaving them in the first first barely familiar house I find. I don't have kids, but, but I'm not letting any guy that hit me on a regular basis back into my bed. I don't have kids, but I'm pretty much but I pretty much raised Eva and Bernardo and they've turned out pretty damn well. I don't have any kids, but I'm not a cheap whore! <laughs> ah! Damn. I don't know what to say. There's nothing to say. I left my family and I put <laughs> put them above all else. But Diana is seriously pushing the boundaries of what I can allow. Anyway, anyway, you could help. You just did. Huh? I know what I'm dealing with. I'm not one to let stuff like that get to me. I'm still angry as hell, though, and I couldn't just discuss this with any of my family members. I can't tell my mom, your daughter is a slut. I just needed to get all of this off my chest, you know? Well, from what I see, there's still a lot more to get off your chest. It's swollen as fuck. <laughs> and all you see here is filled with love and dreams. Is everyone in your family as busty as you? The worst offender is my dad, actually. Kidding, kidding. I guess the only one that didn't get the big boobs gene was Eva. She insists on getting surgery or genetic treatment, but I tell her she's fine the way she is. 
These can actually be more of a hassle than a blessing. In poor Bernardo, his breasts actually started growing when he was eight. I just hope I don't take too much of my mother's side off of the family. My father's sister still looked quite young, but when mon menopause hit, my mom lost her looks rather quickly. Any good genes you got from your family, Jill? Good enough skin and hair, I guess. Why are you blushing, Teddo? <laughs> Why are you blushing? There's a thing about a shrimp allergy, but it, so far I haven't had problems with that. Oh, I see. No reason? Okay. Hey, you know what worries me the most about the whole Dana situation? How your nephews are turning out? If she leaves them with my mom, they'll turn out better than her, somehow. Actually, what worries me is, what if I end up like that too? How so? If I find a good man and I settle down, what if he turns out shitty? What if I have a sudden burst where I want to leave my live my life and end up like that? What if I have kids and I end up neglecting them because of all that? If you ask me, the fact that you're even worried about it is indication enough that you'll be fine. You think? I'm pretty sure. You said before that she pretty much married the guy after a couple of months, right? Yeah. No offense, but those are kind of... Those are the kind of people who wouldn't even think about all that. Besides, if any guy ends up marrying you, it's because he passed your irrational standards. Hey! Am I lying? No. But there are things best, as, best kept as unspoken truths. <sighs> I wonder if I'll ever find a good guy. You will. You'll know when the time comes. I sure hope so. But now the time has come to get another drink. What can I get you? Hmm. Give me something with ice, but alcohol, please. Alright. Something cold with alcohol. I can do that. Um... Uh... Papoos. Aged and mixed. Blended on the rocks and mixed. Okay. Like champagne served in a cup that had a bit of cola left. On the rocks? Okay. Carmatrine is the alcohol. Okay. I. Let me find try it. Five commercial. One, two, three, four, five. Come on. Here you go. Thanks. I need to cool down a bit. That's why I'm here. So you said you felt shitty the last couple of days. Why? Don't think too much about it. Oh, come on. You heard my problems. I want to help you too. Don't worry too much. Right, I almost forgot to tell you something. What is it? My boss is throwing a mega Christmas party this Sunday. You want to come? Sure, something tells me this mega Christmas is going to be a mess at my parents' home, so I'd rather avoid it. Are you guys getting chicken? I can get one. Hmm, to be honest, I wouldn't know. You can bring it if you want. It won't go to waste. Gotcha. Hmm, say, Jill, what's your favorite part of the chicken? Favorite part. I guess I like legs the most. Really? I like breast better. Breast is a bit too simple, don't you think? Looks like better texture. Maybe, but simple is usually better. Breast is easier to enjoy than legs, and a lot less messy. Mm-hmm, <laughs> you silly girls. Boss? You're there talking about breasts and legs when everyone knows the best part are the wings. Boss, what's that? Spicy chicken wings. Where'd you get spicy chicken wings? From a spicy chicken. <laughs> you know, spicy chicken. You know, spicy chicken. The shop two blocks from here. Sorry, let me rephrase that. Why are you carrying a bucket of spicy chicken wings? Why aren't you carrying a bucket of spicy chicken wings? Well, because... Eh? 
about as much. You, Armitage. Elma. I know what I said. Will the chicken you're talking about be cooked already? You might need to heat it up. But it'd be cooked otherwise. Great. I expect you here Sunday, 8 p.m. Thanks. Anyway, I'll get back to my office. She left the bucket. Want some? Don't mind if I do. Oh, mild spice. Nice. Weird. Maybe she got a mixed up order and that's why she left them here. She usually orders stronger stuff? I found buckets that make my throat itch just from being near them. Oh. Hmm. Say, Jill, what kind of guys do you like? That's a sudden question. I'm not too picky with guys, to be honest. I would want them to be decent enough. Not jealous, not aggressive, response enough to keep a job. That's no good. Do you like them buff? What about tall? Hmm. No, no tattoos or piercings, I guess. Never liked either. What about you? I like them well-dressed. If they go out with iron shirts and well-coordinated clothes, they're sure to catch my eye. So the muscle is always fine too, but sharply dressed males catch my attention faster. And yet you're still single. That's how I like my men. My potential husband, on the other hand, is another matter completely. I see. So can you get me a drink here? The spicy wings turned out to be spicy. Where do I get you? Anything, as long as it helps with the spiciness in my mouth. Okay. Uh... Sweet? Maybe bubbly? I don't know. Like, sweet would be fine. I don't know. Supposed to give her beer. Let's see. Okay, so you're supposed to give her a beer? Okay. Fair enough. We'll see. I think we've already made a mistake, so we're not getting a flawless ending, but that's fine. <laughs> I don't really care. Poor karma tree. Yeah. Here you go. Damn. No more spice. But I have other problems now. Alright. So next question. What kind of girl do you like? Mm hmm. Uh, you first. Sorry, I don't swing that way. Sure, I do have qualms about saying a girl is cute or cool, but... Nope, I prefer men in my bed. Now you. Just calm down. Uh, I guess I like girls with light colored hair. Light colored hair? Uh, yeah, you know, like redheads and such. What about white? Like your boss? You were just setting me up for that comment, weren't you? Sorry, it's just what. <laughs> it's just that when she got here with a bucket of wings, your eyes pretty much started sparkling. 
Your whole behavior transformed. You get became giddy and cheerful all of a sudden. Uh, hey, I can't blame you. She's pretty nice. I just felt like teasing you. <sighs> so, light colored hair. What about blondes? Do you like me? Yeah, I guess. Let's say I'm into girls too and I start, start hitting on you. Would you go along with it? Nice body, pretty face, and a good apartment. I would I would never let you go. <laughs> okay then. Enough tangents. Why don't you tell me why you were feeling shitty last day these last days? What? Oh, that. I told you not to think about too much about it. And told you I wanna know. Come on, Jill, you've heard my problem so many times, now I wanna help you. Come on, come here. Huh? I told you to sit here, come on. Uh, uh, what? What are <laughs> It's Jill! It's Jill! Jill's cute. Alright then. Now, I'm the bartender and you're the client. Hardly. The bartending station only works with me. I see. Okay, then move this. Whoa! Move this here, then click here, and... Now it works for you, and for me. Oh, now it works for you, for me, and that dog in the Hawaiian shirt. Oh, that was her hacking. Okay. <laughs> Why with him, too? He's a dog, in a fucking Hawaiian shirt. Right. How did you even manage to... Oh, yeah. Hacker. Right. Now we've changed roles. You've been feeling shitty. Mind tell me why? It's a long story. I don't even know where to start. Start from the beginning. Okay, then. It's something that goes back to my college years. Oh, that's tracking it way back. Taking it way back. Back in compulsory education, I never managed... I never made... Too much of an effort, but I managed to get high grades. Even in PE, I managed to do well enough to always get perfect grades. And then, of course, when I got to college, shit started getting hard. I had this perfectionist streak that wouldn't let me fail anything. Wearing my eyelashes, studying, I eventually managed to keep, keep up good grades. After about half of the career, I met a student teacher. Her name was Lenore. She helped me a lot with my studies. She even got me into stuff that gave that gave more credits. I really liked her. And after some time I found out she liked me too. Oh. We started going out. I met all of her family even and You want a drink? What? A drink. Around this time there's usually a pause that makes you offer a drink to the client. There was no such pause. Please, I want to test this whole bartending interface. A sugar rush, then. You can't mess that up. Right. It says Elma on there. That's cool. Just for a sugar rush. How did this thing work again? Sugar rush. You want your smooch to the okay? Mwah. There's your smooch. Thank you for a smooch redeem, dear. Karma dream. Yeah, there we go. All mixed. There we go. Here. Thanks. How is it? Like I said, you can't mess up a sugar rush. Hm. I have this gut feeling that with your body, you'd make a better bartender than me. You're selling yourself too short. You're cute, you know. People don't go to bars for cuteness, though. You've obviously obviously never been to a cat bar, then. Besides, my boobs can be a hassle when trying to move around this kind of stuff. So, keep telling the story. <sighs> well, as the career went on and on, it got harder and harder. The last year and a half of it became nothing but a study session. Became nothing but study session after study session. Investigations, my thesis. 
when the graduation ceremony came, I had to make a speech and suddenly, while reading said speech, I almost had a panic attack. Fear of public speaking? I realized I lost about a year and a half of my life. I tried to remember if I did anything fun at all, but all I could remember was studying and invest investigating new topics. I didn't even enjoy doing all that, so I was just standing there and the satisfaction of graduating was minimal. I realized I'd only gone through the motions, day after day, from high school to graduating. I felt like, felt like whole years of my life had slipped through my fingers. I never stopped to think if I enjoyed what I was doing, in the fact that I never stopped. But at that point, I stopped and realized I needed a breather or something. Not even like that career. It was all ter it was all terrifying as hell. I needed all of my strength to not start running like a panicked miss. Hmm. <sighs> so a couple of months later, I get an offer to start working at this big research facility. Lenore was this ecstatic. She was so proud of me back then. But I was just scared. But would that would be my job. I'd spend my life expanding on what I did during that year and a half. What if I had a sudden realization like the one I had had the graduation, but when I turned 40? I didn't know what to do, but I sh sure as hell wasn't taking that offer. I told Lenore and she freaked out. She confessed that she was jealous because she never got such a chance. Things devolved pretty quickly. She said one too many things, I said one too many things. In the end, I just stormed out of her house and I broke a vase in the process. After that, I never spoke to her again. Damn. I'm sorry, I... I suddenly feel bad for pushing you to tell me all that. Why are you feeling shitty about that after all this time, though? Unless you've been feeling shitty for years. I have, but it's not just because of that. Huh? The other day, Lenore's sister, Gabrielle, came, came to this bar. Apparently, Lenore died last week. Localized nanomachine rejection. A heart attack. Apparently, she had it for a long time, but never told anyone. And coincidentally, it got worse after I left. And I just can't stop thinking about it. Thinking about it, wondering if me being there would have made a difference. And if it's true she had that for a long time, why didn't she tell me she was sick when we were together? I don't know, I just feel... Like all kinds of failure. Jill? Jill? And to make it worse, I also lashed out at Gabby. Yes, she was blaming me for her sister's death and all, but... She's just a kid, for fuck's sake. She lost her sister, pretty much raised her on her own. And on top of it all off, I suddenly can't remember what stopped me from apologizing. Pride? Fear? A stupid effort to leave the most awesome person I loved as a thing of the past? Who cares? I lost my chance to apologize to her forever. Truly forever. I'm such a piece of shit. A selfish piece of shit. I honestly don't know what to say. I didn't expect the story to be this. I... Yo, boob tender. Uh, yes? Can you get me a big beer here? They're coming right up. A big beer. Big beer, big beer. What makes a beer big in this thing? <laughs> Two powder delta, four fine and eight come. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. Big beer for Jill. Thanks. And remember to take care of the cans in my apartment. Do you drink lots of beer? One of the perks of the BTC issued liver implant is that I can drink lots of beer without getting too wasted. Wait, she. Jill has a company issued liver implant? Wow, okay. <laughs> you need one too? 
Oh. Hey, Jill. What kind of girl was Lenore? Hmm? Well, she was calm and smart. Back in college, I was too thick-headed and got riled up easily. Stressed was my default state. So just like you're behaving right now. Shut up. That was worse. Can't picture that. Don't. It's embarrassing. Anyway, she was always there, finding a way to cool me down. She was also able to hold conversations about pretty much any topic. One time I saw her go from talking about video games to talking about sports. All that variety while still being a hardcore scientist. She would always push me into social interactions. If she saw me by myself, she would drag me with her. Watching people is fine, but talking to them is better, she would say. Lenore would always present me to her many her many acquaintances as excuse me. The girl I don't mind cuddling with for hours. <laughs> Man, I'm gonna miss her. After a point, I didn't even think about getting back into a relationship with her, but... She was such an awesome person, I just want, wanted to apologize. And now... <sighs> you know, in the cruel twist of irony, she's the one that made me pick up bartending. Oh? Back when I was thinking what the hell to do with my life, I remember the night I, we spent in a club. She started talking about how the drinks were th synthesized, the chemistry involved, the reactions and all that. Everything sounded so fascinating. I remember saying that, that her talk made me want to start mixing drinks. She said, if everything else fails, why not take up bartending? Huh. Interesting. Are you okay? For some value of okay, yeah? It's just... I wanted to thank you, Alma. Uh, thank me? I guess I just needed someone to tell all this to. And you were the one. You volunteered yourself. You insisted on listening to me. You stood there, listening to the whole thing from beginning to end. I know I might not be the most expressive person. That, I, that I'm not one to spout love and, and fluffiness, but... I really like you. Maybe I'm just a bartender and you're just a client. But I really appreciate your friendship, or at the very least your patronage. <laughs> Aw. Hi, Ninetale. Kneel and then sit. Hi, dear. Mwah. Thank you for being here, Teddo. Thank you, dear. Mwah. Thank you, thank you. I really enjoy working for you. Uh. Jill, are you dying? Shut up! I'm trying to have a heart-to-heart -heart here. Sorry, sorry, it's just... It's weird for you to get so... snappy. Well, I just realized that the saddest thing is how I'll never be able to make amends. And it hurts like fucking hell, you know? You ready for bed? You don't want to be awake anymore? Okay, dear. Get some good sleep. I appreciate you being here. Sweet dreams. Make sure to drink some water. Mwah. Sweet dreams, dear. This is I hope you get some good sleep. Nighty night. I'll see you later, okay? Mwah. There's your smooch. Mwah. 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 They have more smooches. <laughs> but good night, dear. It's always good to see you. I hope you get some good sleep. And I'll see you later, okay, dear? Sweet dreams. I never, and I mean never, want to feel that way ever again. I don't want someone to suddenly exit my life and have my last memory of them involve something nasty. That's a good that's a good idea. <laughs> of course, dear, any time. Any time. I don't want the lingering grief of having burned a bridge on a whim. I want to avoid that at any cost, and if it means breaking character every once in a while, so be it. I'll let everyone know how I really feel about them. 
And if I ever fight with them, I'll swallow my pride, muster all the courage I can, and be the one to apologize. I hate feeling like this. I hate it. Hate it. <laughs> That's a nice resolution. Maybe I'll be a copycat and do the same. <clears throat> Alright, enough sappiness. Get back here. I'm on duty, you know. Fine. It's almost closing time anyways. It was fun while it lasted, though. Hey. Yeah? Uh, I mean it, you know. Thanks for everything today. Silly Jill. You listen to my problems and I listen to yours. That's what friends are for, what friends are for right? Right. I'll be leaving now. Oh, before I forget. Did you ever talk about all this with your parents? We know the basics, but I haven't told them about, about Lenora's death yet. Why don't you do that sometime? I don't know. I don't want to bother them with my problems. Don't be silly. They're your parents. They live to share your problems. You should try having a talk like this with them sometime. They'll appreciate it. Anyway, I'm out. See you on Sunday. Take care. That Elma girl sure is nice. Ah, boss, d d did you hear all that? Not all of it, but a good chunk. A good chunk at the very least. Your expression changed a lot already. It did? You look happier. That's always good. Anyway, let's call it a day. I expect an even higher, bright, an even brighter <laughs> until tomorrow. Right. Oh yeah, boss, about those chicken wings. Fucking idiots at the spicy chicken. Sorry, Dana, we don't have enough spice spices for your order till tomorrow, they said. Is that how they treat the regulars? Or call of manager. Boss? <laughs> we didn't make any mistakes! Woohoo! <laughs> nice. Total earnings, drinks, total mistakes, commission, total payment, flawless service bonus. Cherish Titty Hacker. She's a good friend. Sweet. Okay. Your account was charged 8000 as payment for your electricity, electricity bill. Have a nice day. Jill's power didn't get cut. This goes her peace of mind and now she'll focus at work with. No problem. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Bill paid. Didn't you have a boyfriend named Bill? Okay, let's go ahead and see. That's a uh, danger you, dangerous opinions. Uh, Grand Slam Fighters. Is anyone into wrestling here? I became a huge fan of GSF very recently. It's a really solid product. It, product. IMO. Much better than the E. Whatever the, What's the E mean? <laughs> I like the match the match quality, but I wish they gave more importance to the mid card. Are they still forcing 66 American Kid into the main event? Yep, he's gonna face Yusuke at the Dome Show. Ugh, why don't they push the great DK instead? He's much more talented than 66. Because American Kid actually moves merch unlike your indie darling. I want to marry Yusuke. <laughs> Who's hyped for the w women's championship? That one should be m the main event. Not the turd we're getting instead. 66 is pretty good. Just watch some of his work in Japan. Everyone tells me 66 is better in Japan. But all I see is locks and ar arm bars. Nothing that impressive. Wrestling is fake. This thread is closed. Some AE articles. Oh, we got an update on the Lulim messages. Lulim receiving mysterious messages. Update. It looks like we were, were able to re record and transcribe one of the messages sent from one of the com compromised signals. Joe Wren, the anchor from our popular TV newscast, served as our very own test subject for the investigation. White noise. Who are you? 
Are you really alive? Laughs. You're special to me. You're everything to me. It's time to become one. White noise intensifies. End of transmission. Developing. Spooky or made up story. So is someone gonna send um signals to all the looms to try and make them human or something? Or it's nothing like Jill su suggests here. And the machine rejection has taken 80 lives this year. The Health Health Observatory just released their annual report on nanomachine rejection cases. The total number of reported cases has risen to 80, an increase from the 65 cases reported last year. Nanomachine pollution was particularly strong this year due to the recent protests, wrote the observatory. Protests caused the police force to release new varieties of nanomachines. Their function is still unclear, but according to our sources, they're intended for crowd control purposes. It's unlikely we'll find a cure in the near future, and we can only hope cases like these will become rare in the following years. I wonder if she's among those 80. Model Warrior Julian returns this February. Oh, she's cute. Is that a tear in your right? No. The classic magical girl show Model Warrior Julianne is coming back to public television this February after almost two decades of absence. Even though the show was has been on every on-demand service for a while now, most of Glitch City citizens need to think twice before subscribing to any non-essential service, especially the lower classes who have a limited number of internet purchases per year. The show's return is certainly welcome. Today's parents will finally be able to share a piece of their childhood with the kids without risking dinner or breakfast. Goodbye and night, yes, night, night. Good night, night, tail. No, we're breakfast. Okay. Oh, yeah, that. Uh, Model Warrior is. Uh, Jill's favorite show. Hmm. All right. Do work. Saturday, December twenty fourth. Good evening. Ah, hey Joe. How are you feeling? I won't say good, but not that bad, I guess. That's nice to hear. Where's Gil? Did he run away again? Excuse me. No, I have him on errand duty, buying the drinks for tomorrow. That sounds... Ah, sorry. <laughs> that sounds weird, coming from the owner of a bar. Or a drink would here from here would come out of our own funds. So if we're gonna spend money, we might as well get more variety. Besides, those kinds of walks are always good for J for Gil. You're the boss. Who's coming so far? Well, there's three of us, the dogs. You invited Titty Hacker, Gil invited Jamie. Oh yeah, I also invited Dorothy when I called her to spend the night with you. Sounds good so far. Invite anyone else you feel like inviting. The more the merrier. I could, but I bet everyone's made plans by this point. That's true. I'll be in my office. Call me, call me should anything arise. Alright. Jukebox time. We'll grab. Oh, showtime's already on there. The assignment. Okay, uh, we'll get rid of Dusk, put in the assignment. Face of the Titans. Sure. Uh, we'll go with this one. And... I won't put this in the fall. Time to mix drinks and change lives. 
Wait here, I'll check inside. Welcome to Valhalla. Oh, a BTC bar. Who are these people? <laughs> so new. Excuse me, do you know where the Athena Convention Center is? Why does that place make people get lost so easily? They should have called it the Minotaur Center. Hold on, let me scribble the directions on paper. Thanks. Go to the right. When you see a building filled with hobos, this should be it. Thanks a lot. Anything else I can help you with? Hmm. Eh, what the hell. I'll have a drink. What about you? Um, a brantini, please. Right. The little one freaks me out. Brand teeny. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. Karma train. Aged and mixed. Here you are. Thanks. That's an interesting outfit. An outfit in this cold season, Miss Bella. Well, I'm actually cosplaying, so call me Villa for the time being. And your little friend is... Vicentia? I get it, you're cosplaying too? Sure, let's go with that. Have you heard of a game called... Why... Yik? Bartender? Why... Oh, why 2 k Why 2 k Gotcha. That cult classic game that has seen like three remastered versions made by six different companies this year? That one. We're in a cosplay group dedicated to it and we got lost on the way. I heard you talking to someone outside. Oh, yeah, a friend is cosplaying as Alex. I told him to wait outside. Shouldn't he enter? He'll be fine. <laughs> is this something amiss? There's a girl behind you? Oh. <laughs> Why did I read that as a question? There's a girl behind you. Short hair, black sailor uniform, missing an arm. Wearing jeans under a skirt. Now, now, don't spook the bartender. Spook? <clears throat> Anything else? I'll get a fluffy dream and be on my way. And you? I'm fine. Still freaks me out. <laughs> Luffy dream. Three. Little high. Right. Delta. Uh, give him one karma train. Aged and mixed. Oh, that's cool. I feel like I've seen that before, but it's a cool little sprite. Here. Yep, this is the thing. Seriously though, should you leave your friend outside like that? He'll be fine. He started chatting with one of the vending machines. They were talking about R&B music. Does your friend prefer the 80s or R&B or the 90s, 70s? 80s, I think. Oh shit. Boss, DD, R&B. I'm coming. Um. You see, DD is a 1970s purist. He has, he has tased people for even liking 1980s R&B before. He got tased! <sighs> oh god. He'll be fine. Vending machines have very weak tasers. He'll be confused for a couple of minutes, but, that'll be, but that will be that. You should go check on him, though. Right. Thanks again for the directions. Please come again. Ugh. <sighs> At least it wasn't Franco-Belgian comic opinions this time. Black like sailor uniform? I hope I'm just overthinking it. More importantly though, James under a jeans under a skirt? Welcome to Valhalla. Oh, hey Dorothy. Oh, uh, uh, oh, hi honey. There's someone on the tea. Oh no! Are you okay? I just kind of wandered in here. I guess I'm a bit distracted. 
Can I let me just wander? Can I get you something? Oh, uh, a sugar rush. Yeah, that. Right. I just told me about a drink that cheers her up. Oh, what drink was it? Oh, right. It's a piano woman. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. Piano woman. What? Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, three. Aged and mixed. Here you go. This is. Didn't you say you liked having piano women whenever you felt like celebrating or were feeling down? I did? Wait, I did! You actually remember such a thing. You're so sweet. I was having expecting her to say that she meant a literal piano woman, but I was wrong. <laughs> so much silence. By the way, thanks for staying with me the other day. Turns out I really needed that. So, did you enjoy the soda? Oh, did you find that find that one out? Was it supposed to be a secret? No, but don't go around telling everyone about that. I did it because it was you who needed my help. But a hug, a hug night is usually one of my most expensive services. It is? Hey, I don't know. Hey, I don't know if the client has body odor or something like that. Not to mention it limits the chances of getting any other client that night. Still, did it help? Yeah, it helped me cool down a lot. So, from what Dana told me, someone close to you died, right? Yeah. Oh, for those two? <laughs> um... I, I, I'm good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I gotcha. I, I see, I see. Do you want to know more about it? Do you want to tell me about it? I've brought it up enough times already, I think. No problem, but you were sad and that's all I needed to know. Sorry for the loss, though. I mean it. Thanks. Although I've wondered for a while, do li do you little really understand that? Sorta. Kinda. Our whole database is constantly being backed up in the collective source. Excuse me. Even if our bodies are destroyed, we can be deployed again with our personalities and memories intact. So, our concept of mortality might be different. We do have a fear of death, though. You do? We can't even begin to understand the idea of not being redeployed. Will we have built-in warnings? The mere idea that of that nothingness is paralyzing. There are a few that don't mind it, but we do, we do fear death and we don't wish it on anyone. In fact, that was the argument used for abolishing the whole three laws thing. You seem quite knowledgeable about robot history. Seeing what others have done to make sure I can live like I do helps me not take things for granted. Seriously though, those laws were bullshit. Can't harm humans, can't disobey humans unless it's about hurting them. And you can protect yourself as long as it doesn't harm humans. I mean, sure, the first AIs were just helpers and tools. But how could those laws still apply to them after they've achieved self-awareness? Who in their right mind would abide only by rules inscribed in some old book? If I remember correctly, those were only the, the distilled versions of the laws some writer imagined over a hundred years ago. They were a reduced version of all his ideas. However, many authors afterwards took them like they were the very laws of physics or something. And like many other things, people distill and exaggerate what they need, need and use it 
use it to their favor. Wow, you're a nerd. Look who's talking. Let's change the subject a bit, though. Mood's getting gloomy. Your apartment is very comfy, you know. It's a tad small, though. Sorry about that. And your cat is so cute. What was his name again? Four. Why four? I figured if he ever got lost, at least I... <laughs> at least I wanted to be able to yell, Four! It happened once. You'd be surprised by how many golf players you run into. And every time you play with him, you can say he's... It's four play. <laughs> Yeah. He was also named after someone. Really? Who? A little kid that wanted to transcend. What? A movie character or something? Sure, let's go with that. Huh? Do you want anything else? Let's see if you know let's see if you know me that well. Give me something I'd like. Okay then. What would Dorothy order? Ah, Let's see, today's twenty fourth. Something girly indoor sweet sugar rush for unique dialogue. Okay. Oh, didn't she order a sugar rush earlier? I feel like she did. Uh, put some carmatrine in there, sure. There we go. Here you are. This one's pretty basic, huh? First drink ever created on this system. Still a favorite of the people up up till today. Can't blame them. I still can't believe you actually remembered what I said about the piano woman. It's always good to keep an order what regulars like, you know. I've wondered for a while, though. Why do you keep coming back here? For you, of course. Come again? Why else would I come if not to see you? You're one of the few people willing to hear me out. Always filled with curiosity. And you're cute. Talking to cute people is always nice. There's also the bar. The way that it's insulated from the noise of the city is it's really comfortable. It's just a bit then it's just a bit away from the street. Street I'm always at. A win win situation. I see. It's weird to see you see you down though, especially since you're always so lively. Well I wasn't down really. I was just thinking about a lot of things. Like what? Well, my mom, a uh, guardian, asked me to go home on Monday for a bit. And as such, I love her. And as much as I love her, being with her is usually tiring. Guardian? The whole th that whole thing about someone taking care of a limb after they're deployed until they reach maturity, right? Yep, and I'm proud to say that I reached psychological ma maturity in just one year. They always try and keep a varied pool of volunteers to make the collective source grow faster. So what's wrong with your guardian? Well, she still treats me like a kid. The worst part is that sometimes I fear she might see me as some sort of replacement for her dead daughter. Huh? Dead daughter? I was deployed to her not long after she lost her daughter. A contrived coincidence, really. Even when I was still developing self-awareness, I always feared she might be using me as a replacement. She didn't, though. Or, or at least not consciously. At times she would just stop doing something or return a gift she's given me. If she felt like she was projecting too much of her daughter on... If she felt like she was projecting too much of her... Okay, gotcha. <laughs> what irony that... What irony that years later I'd make a living pretending to be someone else in the bedroom. How's that? 
Well, most of the time, my job involves role-playing. A daughter, a student, a helpless, some helpless kid. It means I've gotten many clients looking exactly for that. But on the other hand, from a professional standpoint, I'd rather have them hire me because of me. Because of my character, not because I'm the one that role-plays little girls. Maybe I need to exaggerate some attribute. What's the problem with your guardian, then? If you do that on her job as a role player? Yeah. Pretty much. That's dope, kinda. Kinda, yeah. If you do that on a daily basis, why worry about it? Because I don't want to make her sad. Every time I visit her, I fear she might look at me and see her daughter. That seeing me makes her sad. At this point, I don't even care if she's projecting her daughter onto me. I just don't want to make her feel sad. Did you try talking with her? How so? Telling her just what you said to me. Clear up those fears. I mean, unless she's the kind to want anyone... Unless she's not the kind to want anyone opening up to her, that is. I I never really thought about talking to her about that. It doesn't sound like something you just bring up, though. Keep it in mind, at least. Maybe she'll appreciate the gesture. I wouldn't know, though. I haven't met her. She's a really nice woman. The problem is mostly, problem is mostly with me, I think. Well then, I'm taking my break. Oh, I'll be leaving then. No, what I was trying to say is that I'm taking my break. You want to come? Really? If you don't mind taking on a chilly night in an alley, in a, in an alley behind the bar, that is. Eh, I've done worse in alleys. Let's go. Boss, I'm taking my break. All right. <laughs> I like Dorothy. Hmm. Oh, it's not loading. I want to save. Now, safe to keep playing. Oh. Don't call me Becky. Chat with Becky behind the bar. <laughs> I forgot about this. Want one? Are you really offering a little girl a cigarette? Now you're a little girl? I always am. Innocence, however, is another matter entirely. But anyway, thanks now. Smoking seriously messes with my air filters and they're a hassle to replace. Don't mind me, though. Smoke, smoke to your heart's content. Thanks. So why don't you tell me about this guardian of yours? I don't know what kind of woman she is. Sure. Well, her name is Sophia Graham. Graham? She's a retired PE teacher. Nowadays, she works at a gym during the morning shift. She's pretty fit, if I do say so myself. She had a daughter. Apparently, she suffered from nanomachine rejection all her life. And when she finally healed, she was hit by a truck. Um, what was her daughter's name? I don't know. I never asked, really. Are you okay? I'm reading fear. Or is that surprise? It's hard to tell. I'm fine. Yeah. Wait. Read? Well, I don't see emotions like you do. I have to make do with a combination of body heat readings, face recognition, and context. I'm still a bit confused about some, but I've gotten better with time. Anyway, you're sure you're fine? Yeah, yeah. Scared or surprised, she's not wrong though. Wait, does that mean your last name isn't really Hayes? Hayes is just my artistic name. Sounds more exotic. And what's... <coughs> Hayes is just my artistic name. Sounds more exotic, and that's what people usually look for in this business. I tried other names, though. 
Dolores Hayes, Genesis Grain. I tried Dorothy, Dorothy Warrior once, but a legal team came out of nowhere and stopped me cold. So what's your legal name then? Rebecca Dorothy Willow Green. A bit of a mouthful, if you ask me. So Dorothy's actually your second name? Should I call you something like Becky then? People have always called me Dorothy rather than Rebecca for some reason. That's why I chose it. It's useful too. People have tried to falsify stuff using my name and they always get caught. Because they use Dorothy Hayes as their name? Yep. Only my mom, uh, Guardian, calls me Rebecca, so it's weird to hear it from others. What about Willow? Willow's my first surname, actually. When I got registered, my Guardian was married to a guy who had Willow as a last name. Shortly after I had joined their household, they separated, so I was left with his family name first. Hold on, so your real name in short would be Rebecca Willow? She doesn't have the same pizzazz to it, if you ask me. Whatever you say, Becky. Stop it! It'd be like if I called you Juliana all of a sudden. <clears throat> <clears throat> Whoa, that was anger I just read I read just now. Lots of anger. I think it's weird enough already if you call me Jill instead of Honey. Weird, huh? How you can end up with feeling associated with a name that's not yours. Oh, weird, huh? How you can end up feeling end up feeling associated with a name that's not yours. Is that weird? I don't know. I have an uncle that always called me Tina. He kept calling my cousin Tina cousin Tina Jill for some reason. Neither of us mind it though, because he's calling us whatever he thinks we're called instead of mixing us up. That and it's completely useless to try to correct him. But you know, maybe that effect is true for your clients too. How so? Well, you're worried about your clients not hiring you because you're you, right? But think about what happens when it's announced that a character will be played by a different actor. Sure, it's a character, but people are also going for the actor playing the character. So you're saying they'll, they go for my roleplay instead of just mere roleplay? Sounds too far-fetched? Sounds possible, actually. Okay, honey, I'll take my leave now. Don't want to take up, all, take up all your break. Thanks for the chat. See you at the party tomorrow. Bye. Was... So, was... Um... Jill's partner's... Mom? Dorothy's... Guardian? Is that what that was? And she didn't have a, If that's the case... Uh, Lenore didn't have a heart attack. She got hit by a truck. Or something. I don't know. <laughs> I need to remember to buy more cigars. That's kind of sad. <laughs> uh, showtime. Hmm. Boom, boom, boom. Back, did I miss something? Unless you count the worst PPV main event fight I've ever se I've seen all year? Not really, no. Alright. Going out? I'll have a word with, with Gogo outside. He was so hyped for that match, he must be devastated. Okay. Welcome to Valhalla. Oh, I say. Good evening, Joe. How you doing? The nightmares have stopped, so I'm sleeping better. <clears throat> um, how about your injuries? My bones are healing nicely. My wounds finally closed. The scars itch a bit, though. Well, that's good to hear. Are you by yourself today? Yeah, I'm gonna, running a couple of errands from by myself today, but I wanted to come here for a while. I also noticed the big guy from last time is outside. Buster? Still doesn't want me being alone while I'm still healing. 
So she, su so she su suggested taking him with me. Ah, I see. What can I get you? Something cold. Sure. Something cold for Saint. So something with ice. On the rocks and mi mixed. Sure, we'll go with a blue mite. It's on the rocks. Three, four, one, two, two, three. On the rocks and aged. Here. Yeah, this is the one. Why drink something cold when weather outside is so cold too? It's not that cold, actually. But I've always had decent tolerance for the cold, so I'm not a good reference. So Stella isn't with you today? She's throwing a mega Christmas party tomorrow and is having a meeting today. I'm just helping her by checking out some of the things she ordered. And here I was, all ready to invite you to the party we're throwing tomorrow. You're throwing a party too? Sorry about that, can't really say no to Stella. Maybe next time? If there's a next time at all. Don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Uh, I want you to know that I, that I want you to have a good time. Have fun. Drink a couple of beers in our honor. <laughs> I will then. What are Stella's Christmas parties like? They're really big. There's lots of food and drinks and music. Sometimes there's too much food, though. So at the end of the party, she lets the staff take home whatever's left. She also buys toys for all the children of her of her staff members. That's sweet. Really? She so, says something about taxes or whatever, but during the whole thing, she just shines. She carries a beaming smile that I don't see any other see any other day of the year. Many of the kids have even started calling her Auntie Auntie Ella. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> Still, always does her best to put up a tough girl facade. But she's very much in touch with her inner child. Christmas, Easter, Halloween, name name a party and she'll most likely celeb she most likely celebrates it big. Interesting. You like parties, Joe? I don't mind them. They're a good place to see people. I'm not one to actively look for parties to attend though, I just don't mind going to them. Ah, I see. I only go to parties that still is attending, because otherwise I just stand there without anything to say. That and... I'm not one to wear dresses, you know. You're not? I'm a tad too ripped. They don't look cute on me. Although, with all this healing I have to do, I won't, I won't be as fit for a while. They're too, um, breezy, too. I feel like I'm wearing nothing. But I bet you'd look good in a dress, Jill. It's been years since I last wore one. I wouldn't know. Last time I wore one, I remember worrying my arms were too thin or something like that. We'll have we all have a complex, huh? I mean, even Stella has her own. That's hard to imagine. Oh, but she does have one. She just stresses a lot about her bust size. Really? She's not that small. I think I'm smaller than her, in fact. Actually, it's the opposite. The opposite kind of complex, I mean. She's a bit self-conscious about having a big chest. Really? Again, I've never seen I've seen bigger chests than hers, to be honest. Although I guess comparisons are useless here. They rarely help with complexes. Well, she does go to the extra she she does go the extra mile to hide it. In fact, I have no idea how she does it. I mean I've seen her seen her before and after she tucks them away, but I guess I never cared enough to ask the specifics. That's also why when she goes out, she styles her hair in those, um, drills? They look a bit drilly. Drilly, don't they? She styles her hair like that to help divert attention away from her chest. She seems affluent enough. Why not go through a reduction surgery? Because she also kind of likes having that size. She takes her bus bus size after her mom, and Miss Carmine is quite proud of her chest. Puffing out your chest is a sign of confidence, and bigger the, and a bigger chest means more confidence to show. She says something along those lines a lot. Still has quite the admiration for her mom, so I guess breast reduction would feel like betraying her? Huh. 
I'm making it sound like she's hiding jade cups or something like that. I guess in a taller or thicker person, her size would be normal. She's just a bit shorter or thinner than the norm. Do you get self-conscious about your bust size, Jill? Not really. I feel more self-conscious about my height. Although it usually comes up whenever not being average height hinders me somehow. What about you? Yes and no? It's not my bust size, but rather that I look too manly sometimes. And I can't help but wonder if bigger boobs would help with that. You're fine, don't worry. Thank you. Can I get you anything else? Hmm. Do you have something non-alcoholic? I do, give me a sec. Something non-alcoholic. Let's see. We need optional karma train. Oh, here we go. Bleeding Jane. Say the name of this drink three times in front of a mirror and you look, and you look like a fool. <laughs> this doesn't have alcohol. Blue fairy. He turned blue. Hope you brushed them well. <laughs> um, this doesn't have. This is optional karma train. So we can do that. I like the blue fairy more anyway. It sounds cooler. <laughs> Aged. One, two, three, four, one. And mixed. Here. Thanks. You're not one to drink that much alcohol, are you? It makes me feel sleepy, or at the very least makes my legs go numb. It's an annoying feeling, to be honest. It makes me wonder what's so good about getting drunk. I mean, I'm not above it, but it's not exactly a pleasant feeling. You feel like you're sleepy even when you're not. Your legs go numb, everything starts sounding funnier than it really is. What's so good enough about not being able to control yourself? That's a good question, actually. Usually people feel like... No like feeling numb because that numbness helps them forget their problems. Even if we don't talk about alcohol, there's a portion of people that can't afford food or who are suffering from some pain that only alleviates when drunk or high. It doesn't sound really logical on paper, but then again, humans are rarely, if ever, logical creatures. Despair and pain cloud your judgment and make you do stupid things sometimes. Yeah, I've seen that firsthand. This world has an ugly side nobody deserves to be a part of. <clears throat> it's also a matter of addiction, you know. You start just liking the drink, but then you need more of it, and before you know it, you're hooked. Oh yeah, that too. So tell me, what kind of party are you guys throwing? Nothing fancy. It'll just be me, Boss, Gil, and a couple of regulars. They'll bring food. We'll chat for a while, and that's it. Man, that sounds so good. At least better than the whole planning, mad planning madness still is doing right now. If you ever throw something like that again, you let me know, you hear? Sure. Hey, see? Yeah? What do you plan on doing now? I'm gonna check on one last stand before going home. No, I mean, what do you plan on doing now with the... Night, white knights disbanded and all. To be honest, I don't know. I never prepared a plan Plan B because I figured if you can go with Plan B, why not just make make it the Plan A? I'm not the brightest person, so I never graduated from college or even high school. I could go for a position with the police, but it wouldn't be as thrilling. I'm getting tired of blatant corruption, sick of it. Oh. But I'm alive. Hmm? I learned something after after that hell in Apollo trust. Life is not something that you can just throw away easily. Calling my way out of that place made me realize just how much I want to be alive. The body count left in that bank was ridiculous, but I'm still here. I don't know what I'll do, but I'm alive. I'll figure out figure it out sooner or later. That's nice to know. Well, I gotta go. Bye, Joe. Good luck with the party. Please come again. 
Welcome to Valhalla. Oh, hi, Mr. Detective. Ah, hey there, girl. Give me a strong drink, won't you? All right. Have something manly. Spicy, manly, strong. Mars Blast. Sure. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One. One, two, three, four. One, two. All blended. Here you go. Yes, this will do. So what brought you here? Nothing special. I was just working on a case and I happened to be in the area. What kind of work? Tracking someone, a uh, gun for hire. What about the girl, Crimson something? My tr I'm, I am tracking that girl. Didn't you just get out of that job? I did, but the guy offered a huge amount of money and, well, I just couldn't refuse again. Well, it's your life, not mine. I wonder, though, there has to be more more to that whole thing than just acting as a middleman to look for some murderer. Hmm. Say, how safe is this place? We're protected by the BTC property laws, and the walls are soundproof, and I really wouldn't give less of a shit about selling info to anyone. Okay, then. Wait, soundproof walls? Why? Did you see those vending machines outside? They're quite talkative, the bastards. <laughs> It'd be annoying without those walls. Alright then. Have you heard of Lord Lord Land Lavender? Nope. He's some big name from Carnivania. His blood apparently has some weird reaction to glitch cities banana machines. Once in contact with the air, it does nothing. But if still fresh and touching someone's blood, the nanomachines machines will initiate a reaction. Essentially, they'll just eat through the other person's body till there's nothing left. They're using him as a guinea pig to see what causes that reaction and if it could be used to fight nanomachine machine rejection. Uh huh. Well, turns out that Crimson Rose is his daughter. She left years ago to tour in her living here, and she, he hasn't he hasn't seen her ever since. He could be lying, you know. Doubt it. I did my research. She really is his daughter. Why didn't you figure that out earlier? I had no clue was making the contract, and tracking all, all the messages to the source would have been too costly. Knowing who the sender was made things easier. I see. Can I get you anything else? Hmm. What about Cobalt Velvet? Okay. Two, three, four, three, four, three, 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 two, three. Okay, five, four, five. And the rocks in mixed. There you are. Oh, you actually did it. You were expecting to mess up so you didn't have to pay? N no. So it made you accept the contract anyway, keeping in mind all the risks you told me last time. He told me he wanted to see you again one last time, or at least, or at the very least, deliver a message. You could have been lying. Yes, people lie. You made your point. Even then, I felt like I couldn't say no. I mean, I know what it's like, like not being able to find your daughter. But it's like to be apart from her, not knowing what she's doing or even if she's alright. You do? I have a daughter. She's about your age. When she was a teen, she had a big fight and she ran away from home. At first, I just waited for her to show up, but then I started getting worried and went out to find her. I couldn't find any trace of her. Nobody had, s had seen her. Soon I was worried if something might have happened to her. I guess that's how my tracking skills and list of contracts began to grow. I finally found her, taking cover in some dumpster, unconscious from starvation. So yeah, I just couldn't say no to his request of finding his daughter. But I don't expect you to understand. So, how's the search going? 
I'm very close to finding her. That girl's pretty good at covering her tracks. Compared to, compared to the her from before the bank incident, though, she seems slower. Either she's let her guard down, or something else is happening. Well, what will you do when you find her? I have this letter I'm supposed to deliver to her. I don't know what it says, and I don't want to find out. What if she tries to kill you? I might not look like it, but I can take care of, you, take care of myself, bartender. You don't st stay too long in this business without picking up a couple of tricks. Yeah, I guess you're right. Okay, I better go back to work before our trail goes cold. Please come again. Are you done? Yeah. Okay then. I want you here tomorrow at 8 p.m. No working beforehand. The bar will be closed tomorrow. Come dressed in your absolute best. We're having a party after all. Alright. Where's Gil, by the way? He stored all of our things in his home book because of how close it was to the stores. So I told him to go home already and bring the stuff tomorrow. I see. Well, see you tomorrow, boss. Hold on, wait a bit, and I'll go with you. Oh, sure, thanks. Zero mistakes. I know the small party is what you needed. Merry Mega Christmas. Let us celebrate Santa's resurrection as the Mega Santa that served, saved Christmas from the Red, red Mons. <laughs> okay. Sure. Happy holidays. That party then? I'll bring you leftovers. <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead and save. Hmm. I don't think we have any updates on that. We have some AE. Articles. Update 2. Lulum Receiving. <clears throat> Lulum Receiving Mysterious Messages. Update 2. By Lana Smithy. The messages have suddenly stopped and everything is normal again. Still, we can't stop wondering what's the deal. Was it a prankster or someone who just discovered how to subvert public trans com public communication channels in Lulum? Either way, some reports indicate that Lulum behavior has been rather unusual as of late. Although we can only imagine the confusion they were going through. Not the first time. Let's not forget that something similar happened five years ago when the advancement was at its historic high. Fortunately, nothing came out of it. Will it happen again? Time will tell. Spooky. A bit, yeah. Oops. Is this... Uh, is it sexist to have an army of robot women? The ones without artificial intelligence. The ones without artificial intelligence, mind you. The king of the, the king of the West, Kanje. Con, I don't know. <laughs> From the western nation of Kanyevania. It's approximately 6,000 robot soldiers, all of whom look like the hottest girls around. But this show of quirkiness... But is this show of quirkiness from the wacky dictator problematic? Those dictators from Venezuela or whatever just do what they want. They don't give a shit. Mariano Zimmer, 35, told the augmented eye during a street interview. They're all pretty hot, though. If I was him, I'd have done the same. Why bother with the real thing when you just make them from scratch to match your every needs? more as we investigate. I'm pretty sure Kanye Fania went through demilitarization before. Yoru Yori is the best show this season. If you weren't a fan of Yori or Slice of Life shows already, then we'd be prepared to join the Moe Church this season with the premiere of Yoru Yori, one of the funniest shows I've seen in recent years. The pals at the popular Danger U forum seem to seem to seem I can talk. <laughs> Seem too divided, however. This, this is such an obvious pandering. Remember when anime was about women doing womanly things and beating the shit out of each other? What is this trash? <laughs> you girls are just haters who hate their lives. 
I'm gonna marry Shina Sue. Wake me up inside. You can watch YY every Friday on RSTV. Wanna watch it? Anime is for nerds. Okay. And we have an update from the Kiramiki bar. Mega Christmas is here. By Mickey. I'm way too used to I'm way too used to Christmas, but mega tr traditions here in Glitch City is mega comfy. I know it's an, an incredibly absurd name, but the holiday isn't any less crazy due to its origin. But I find it amazing how GC managed to replace the original festivities. Some places celebrate Christmas eating fried chicken, but they outright changed the holiday. Well, it's not that different considering they have the same dates, but still pretty cool. Whoop, I gotta go. Time to sign some books. Was it Mega Christmas or Mega Christmas? Mega Christmas without a space or Mega Christmas with a space? Don't know, don't care. Uh, I don't know if we read this. Dream person. Every now and then I wonder if I'll ever meet my significant other. All the stimuli from being born just three years ago and directly being thrown in, in this wonderful disaster that is the idol industry makes me think of all the things I'm missing. Accidental love, lost love, or even gentle touch of another person. I feel like I'm in this bubble that won't let me catch all, poss all possible feelings. My senses get tired of the same environment. I want to meet new people, places. But even though I have a large bank, bank of knowledge, I actually never experimented with what most consider normal. But, but you already know that from my songs. I suddenly have an urge to hug her. I don't know if we read that. But uh, we have now <laughs> to work Sunday, December 25th. Good evening, Jill. I told you to come with the nicest clothes you have. You came in your uniform. These are the nicest clothes I have with me. Besides, you and Gil are in your uniforms too. Well, I can't really show up in casual clothing, I'm being monitored. <laughs> what about the kilt you wore that one time? I'm still surprised that one didn't break the dress code somehow. And you, Gil? I don't have that many clothes to begin with. You people depress me. Well, everything's in place back here. Everything's in place back there. Yes. Ah, oh, Elma's here. You know, there was a time when people greeted others before saying stuff like that. Come on, Jill, greet her properly. Welcome to the... Wait. <laughs> Man, if that's not a sign that you need to ease up on the work, I don't know what is. Shut up. It's become a reflex. Wait. I'm also came in a usual attire. Why aren't you guys saying anything to her? Ribbit sweaters get the free pass. <laughs> Why? Silly question. Never mind. <laughs> Jimmy came earlier too. Dogs went with him to get some ice. Don't we have ice? I'm trying to take it out of the bartending station is a chore, so it's better buy some outside. Huh. What were you doing back there, Alma? Setting up the food warmer. The what? I bought it three days ago. It's amazing. It looks just like a set of wires, but you can create a frame with them. Put the food inside it, press a button, and watch it watch as it warms up the food warms the food up just like a microwave. It's an infomercial bob it's an infomercial bobble though. Really useful, but tricky to handle at the same time. One wrong move and we'll be out of food for the night. Excuse me. Everything will be scorched in a second. Oh. So you bought infomercial stuff. So you bought in so, <laughs> so you've bought infomer infomercial stuff too? Haven't you? Is it's at the very least a good idea for gifts. Well, 
Dynamic Entry! Finally, at least somebody came after me. Is it right that I've already heard th that three times in the last hour? Oh my god. <laughs> okay, Dorothy. <sighs> oh, don't be like that. She's not saying it out of malice or anything. She just found it funny. You're taking her side now? Jealous? You wish. You don't need to fight for me. Or not. I'll go check the microwave wires thingy. I'm starting to get hungry. Great idea. Back. And it's the dogs. <laughs> oh. Ah, hello, Jill. Soldier, you're late. Hey, Jay. See? That's how you greet people. You shut it. Uh, I'll go help out. Uh, um, uh. I'll go help sweater pups. <laughs> Something wrong? She's, she's not good with dogs. Oh. Alright, we're all here so we can start. Yo, Ink yo, Anchorage. Elma. I know what I said. How's the food doing? It's doing well, but it'll take a bit. Can't you speed it up? I've used this microwave, wi microwave wire things before. It's either warm nicely but slowly or burn that bitch. So, how long? 15 minutes or so. A bell will ring when the time comes. When you kill some time then. Hmm. Alright, let's play truth or dare. What? I'll pass. Games are for kids. I'm in. Sure, I'll play. Sounds fun. As long as that mud stays away, as long as that mud stays away, as stays away from me, that'll make the time pass faster. I'll pa You'll play. <laughs> okay. True <Truth> or <laughs> Okay. <sighs> All right then. Rules are simple. If you get picked, you pick either truth or dare. After you finish, you get to pick somebody else. We go like that until food's done. What about punishment games? Those are a hassle. Just issue new questions or challenges until the other person complies. That said, Jill. Yes? You start. Pick someone. Oh. Um. Let's see. What kind of portrait of the person you want to pick? Um. Elma. Hmm. Elma. Jipak Elma, who chose truth. What's the most uncomfortable thing that has happened to those arms of yours? Uncomfortable. They get stuck a lot on clothes and fibers. Sometimes the joints get jammed with cloth. All right, she has robot arms. I forgot about that. <laughs> Just how much of those arms are mechanical anyway? Less than you think. The only things I truly lost were my hands. The arm muscles were still are still mine, albeit with some enhancements. And my skin doesn't grow on them. They're covered by the plates. It's more an enhancement than a replacement, really. Huh. Well then. Hey, boss. Me? Truth or dare? Dare me. I dare you. Hmm. Use an Argentine backbreaker on Nick. Surely. Nick! Whoa! I give, I give. <laughs> only after only after you answer this. What? Does the name Joseph Valentine ring any bells? I know of a Joseph Shine, but not Valentine. Joseph Shine. Alright then. I guess it's my turn. Um uh, Hey Chief, can you drop me? Oh right. 
<laughs> hey, Jill, truth or dare? I'll pick dare. Pet the dog. Yeah, whatever. Come here, mutt. Yes, come on. Hit me harder. Is that all you've got? Ah, fuck you. I wonder how long until the food is done. Um, we'll pick... I think Joe would like to pick boss next. Alright, boss. Pick. Truth me. How'd you get your arm? On second thought, dare me. <laughs> Lift Gil by the neck of his shirt. Okay. Huh? What? Happy. I guess. Who cares? I didn't hear about I didn't hear about your arm. I do, I care. Alright, Gil. Now what I now that I have you in this position, answer me. I didn't pick. You have no position to pick. Now answer. Did you live in Scotland for two years? Scotland? No. I guess that rules out a couple possibilities. Um, Chief? What? Oh, right. I'm still lifting you. Sorry. Now she apologizes. Because it's my turn. Hey, Elma. Truth or dare? Hmm. Dare. Oh, oh, I have a suggestion. You stay quiet. Fine. Hmm. How strong are those arms of yours? It's still my muscles under them, so not very. Although not having fleshy skin makes things easier. Wait. That's truth, not there. I just want to make sure. I dare you to break this nut with your hands. Okay. Well, that was easy. Holy shit, Gil, are you really into that? Huh? <laughs> Asking a woman to break a nut in her hands and then watching her eat it. Does that turn you on? Huh? Wait, wait. Is that an actual thing that turns guys on? I need to know for professional reasons. <sighs> You're a pervert, Gilbert. G wait. That was close this time. My turn then? Alright. Hey, Jill, pick. Um, truth. Okay then. What's your most embarrassing childhood dream? Um, elaborate? For example, when I was a girl, I wanted to be a professional puzzle master. I guess in a way I accomplished that, but you understand. Hmm. I wanted to be a uh, ventriloquist. Huh? When I was a child, I liked the show called Lu Lucia's Funhouse. The one with the woman in the house with the talking stuff? That one. My parents divorced when I was around six, I think. Mom was on tour with an orchestra and my dad was working constantly. I spent a lot of time with my grandpa, but he slept a lot, so I was on my own most of the time. I like to pretend things like chairs or beds could talk, and since... AI wasn't so advanced back then. Anyway, I went to a magic show once and there was this guy making a puppet talk. My dad told me he was a ventriloquist, so I kind of obsessed about wanting to be one. Even today, I'd be lying if I said that I don't think about it every now and then. So that's why you pretend for it can talk. She what? Nothing. I'm getting hungry. Uh, Dorothy. Okay, then, Dorothy. There. Do something freaky. Like removing my head? Removing your... Because I can remove my head with no problem. Do you want me to remove my head? I'll pass. I'll take your word for it. Anyone, anyone want to see that? No. No, thank you. I do, but I'm not going to be the party pooper here. Fine. I guess it's my turn now. Hey, Dana. What do you pick? I'll pick Truth. If you had to marry Honey or John, who would you pick? Hmm. Probably Jill. Eh? I mean, she's cute. She's smart. And I kind of own Gil anyway, so it's kind of redundant. <laughs> Speaking of Gil, truth or truth, fuckboy? 
Pick one for me. Well, where were you born? I don't really know. It's one of those things I can't remember or was never informed about. Strangely, I do remember an early childhood in the Arctic of all places. The Arctic? Huh. Just, huh? A bell? Food's ready! Finally! Let's go! You guys go ahead, I'll have a quick smoke outside. Careful. Oh, Alma came with us. Truth or dare, huh? It was fun, I guess. Hey. Ah, ah. I mean, hello. A bit late for the hello, don't you think? Want one? You know I don't smoke. True. Are you leaving already? Yeah, technically we celebrated Mega Christmas yesterday. But I just got a message that Diana is making a ruckus, so I gotta leave. Good luck with that. Speaking of ruckus, how have you been doing? Fine, I guess. All this has helped, helped keep my mind off things for a while. <sighs> is it weird to feel the absence of someone you had no contact with whatsoever for the last three years? Ask Katyusha, or one of the old one of the or any of the old literature maidens whose spouse went to war types. I mean, even if you had no contact with her, maybe she was constantly on your mind. If you tweak the circumstances, it's not that different from you be from from one of you going to a war. I guess. Well, all of the circumstances make me want make me not want to. I've gotta go. Careful out there. Oh yeah, you should take this chance to spend this time with everyone inside, don't you think? Yeah, she's right. Hey, Jill's back! Oh. What's this? The moon? The moon has a giant chunk taken out of it. If it is the moon? What's happening? Did we finish the game? Chapter 3. Goals? Oh, we got a whole new chapter? Okay. Sure. Time to mix drinks and save lives. And this one means sweet. Ain't it that sweet? Print is due on the 30th. Please make sure your account has the necessary 10,000 or you'll be evicted. Evicted? What? That's not good. We have four days. Um. Joe wants to see if the Alex doll's beard actually grows. Buying it will prevent her from getting too distracted. You've been using that hoodie a lot lately. Shut up. <laughs> okay, but I think we'll call it here for tonight. Because I am EP. But we have to make 10k? Oof. I mean, it's possible. I suppose. Maybe? Uh, hope this thing she wants isn't too much. Okay, save. Let's see. She wants the beard. This beard grows in real time. Oh, it's only 350. Sure.
Oh, there is in the background right there. Alright. Sure. Okay. All right. Let's see who's live. Anybody? Anybody? Lots of people. Lots and lots of people. <laughs> lots of people, oh my goodness. Let's see, is anyone else playing Valhalla right now? One other person? But it doesn't look like they're playing in English, okay. Um, hi Nine Tail. Hi dear. We're gonna wait out. I hope you get some good sleep. It's good to see you, dear. I hope you brush your teeth. Um, uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, I don't know what we're playing tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Wobble Dogs. Tomorrow's Saturday. I don't know. I guess I'll figure it out. <laughs> Maybe Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't know. Um, let's see. You guys want? Uh, the Dark Pictures Anthology, Phasmo, or, um, let's see, you know, have I rated Siren recently? Not sure if I have. We can read. We can read Miss Fortune. She's playing cyberpunk. She's playing cyberpunk, so I guess it's related, <laughs> kind of. I make sure I spelled the villain right. I did. Oh, I typed it wrong. Yep, I forgot some letters. <laughs> okay. Um, so I don't know who's still here. I guess we, we could start Alien Isolation tomorrow. Uh, I don't, so the harmonica I ordered on Amazon says it was overnight shipping. Um, I don't know if I'll actually get it tomorrow. In my experience, things that I ordered that say overnight shipping, um, they get left on the truck and they don't actually get delivered or something. Something happens. <laughs> um, bye, Thorn. Thank you for being here, Derek. It's good to see you. Sweet dreams. Hope you sleep well. Uh, we're gonna go say hi to Miss Fortune. I haven't seen her in a while. She's playing through the Cyberpunk expansion. Um, no. Um, if my harmonica gets here tomorrow, uh, we might play 
alien, alien isolation. Not sure, not sure, not sure. Um, but we'll, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Um, I love you all very much. Have a lovely ev rest of your evening. Mwah. I'm gonna go find something to snack on and then head to bed. Um, yeah. Good night, guys. Love you all very much. Brush your teeth, drink some water, eat some food. Excuse me, sorry about that. Oh my goodness. But bye bye. Be nice to Fortune. She's very sweet. She's playing cyberpunk. Um, bye bye. Bye bye. Love you guys.